Greetings and welcome to another Fake Grand Order video. It has been a while and it is the brand new year and that means a couple of things that are coming our way. Not only did we get the prelude of the brand new Cosmos in the Lost Belt story, which is pretty amazing by the way, and we also got a look at the little new Da Vinci little girl there that's gonna come around I think a year later, which kind of sucks, but that means there are two things coming up right now so that are technically already happening. The first is the New Year campaign that comes with two things. The first is the Lucky Bag Summoning campaign that, as with every year, can only be done with paid quartz, so around $35 to $40, and you're guaranteed at least one 5 star. Now the problem with this year's is that, as you can see, it is not divided by class, but rather by groups of classes, and there's only two of them, and you can only do one of them, and unfortunately, because of this, it is completely unpredictable who you're going to get from either of these groups, and because of that, I cannot recommend you do this at all. Remember, last year we had one for each individual class, and in that case, yes, it was worth it because you could at least get something from the class that you were lacking. Or in some cases, you could even get something that you really needed, like Waver or uh, what, uh, Gilgamesh, stuff like that. Unfortunately, this year, because there are so many op uh, things that can pop out during that summon, I cannot recommend it at all. Which kind of sucks. So I was actually planning on doing one for the... Uh, for an Avenger, because I'm still missing an Avenger class, and Foreigner, I don't really need Abby right now. But anyway, that's what it, that was about. Now, let's talk about the, the brand new Foreigner, or Hokusai here. During her summon, she's going to have a raid up during various days, including various others, various other limited rarity servants. Well, limited, uh, what's it called? Availability servants, or maybe some, not so much. Uh, to mammals, not limited. So let's see, Lim very limited, very limited, very limited, haven't seen him in a while. Her event will come back next year, I think, so you don't have to worry about getting Melty there. Not limited, 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 limited. Yeah, so as you can see, each day a new, another server is going to have a different rate up. I tried one multi-summon and five tickets and didn't get anything worthwhile. Oh yeah, no, I actually, I got a couple, well, I got one of each of these brand new craft essences here. Uh, let's see, you got two of this one, one of this one, and two of this one, so it's okay. Now, Star Absorb, that's actually very nice because we're actually going right now into what's going to be the new Quick Meta instead of the Buster Meta that we've seen pretty much since the introduction of the Break Bar, where Buster Shermans generally have a hard time filling up their normal Phantasm Bars and launching them over again, but Quick Servants, on the other hand, do not. If you've ever played with a Jack... If you get her a heroic quick arch chain, she can essentially generate a full 50 critical stars or more. And then if on the next turn she gets her quick arts and a cup her quick and two uh, no her arts and two quick cards, she can completely fill up her MP bar in two turns. And that's what makes the quick meta so powerful that not only are you doing increased damage with criticals, but you're filling up your noble phantasm bar very quickly. Other than that, all of these alternate ones are I did not get this one, unfortunately. I don't have any of these. I've got a couple of these. But anyway, let's take a look at little Hokusai here, now that we're here, shall we? Oh yeah, and the trial quest for her. It's got four parts, and we get one summon ticket for completing it. But anyway, let's talk about her. So she is the second foreigner, and just as with Abby, she is extremely niche in that foreigners are designed to deal with berserkers. So if you're having trouble dealing with Berserkers during the story or challenge quest, then trying to get one is definitely not a bad way to go. So let's see, Double Buster, Double Arts, 6 hits on her Arts cards, very nice. And let's see, the MP charge per attack is 33, and I think that goes up to basically 1%. So she gets 6% MP charge on her Arts cards, or a little bit more if you can get the full Arts Quick Arts chain. But let's see, Skills, Grand Self Evasion, and Charges on MP, gotcha, okay. I don't really like this skill because you either give up your defense for MP charging or you give up your MP charging for saving up for a defense, so kind of a, of a bad skill there. And then increase own arts for three turns, increase buff removal resistance, and increase own debuff resistance. So, at max level to 100%, so during that turn, her arts cards are 30% more powerful and her buffs cannot be removed and she cannot be afflicted by any type of debuff, so that's not, that's not a bad skill. And... Inflicts defense down for 3 turns to enemy when attacking with arts cards for 3 turns from 10 to 20%. Unfortunately, it... Uh, oh, for 3 turns. Okay, then. I don't think this is a stack up with itself. So, 
so it's not a bad scoop, but not something I would absolutely rush in filling out. So just with the other foreigners, which is only Abby at the moment, gets two critical stars and non debuff resistance. Debuff success rate, arts performance, not bad, and divinity type B. Now, her Nova Phantasm deals damage to all enemies, so not that hard hitting, unfortunately, but deals extra damage to enemies with man attribute. Now, this does not mean male, this means man attribute, and if a long time ago you uh, were actually paying attention to uh, Emilia's little lesson there, people who completed, who completed great deeds as normal humans, so... Caesar, Ivan the Terrible, Martial Arts Dexter, Sakyo Jiro. So basically, any famous human that actually existed is considered a man attribute. So there's plenty of those over, around here in the well, in the game. So should you try and roll? Well, you can. You should definitely try and throw tickets in her direction. You can definitely do a lot worse. The paid summoning campaign. Yeah, I would personally skip out on it. If it were limited to one type of servant per pool, I would definitely roll on it. But because there's just way too much variety, it's just not worth your time. Or hard-earned money, by that matter. So, that's that. But what else is coming this way? Well, let's go take a look at the events that are coming in the future, shall we? Because that's actually pretty important. Because that way we need to, we need to figure out what to save our precious quartz for. And so, let's see, it's 118 January. So in January, as you can see, we've got a little, a few things coming around. So right now we're here, January 1st. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get this one since it relates to something else that happened. But the rerun for the Heroic Servants of Da Vinci is coming by. Then the I think we already had the 900-day anniversary, I think. Uh, this questionnaire, hopefully we can actually get it so we can get those tickets. Uh, Setsubun, this is definitely new. Uh, this, we already did get it, I remember that. And we're also getting the Valentine's event for, that comes in with Semiramis. So, let's take a look, shall we? So, anything interesting during the Da Vinci Summoning Campaign? Uh, oh, Gene Alter Raid Ups! Okay, then. So, if you're hoping to get Gene Alter like I am because you're missing an Avenger, this is definitely the time to try and get her. Those it. The uh, main info, event bonus, those again... Let's see, so you can get both of these maxed out. Let's see, three goes each turn and muster 10%. That's okay. When defeated, MP charge are left by 15% and buster card performance. They're not particularly amazing, but they're okay. And M MP charge at the beginning and healing resist. So these aren't particularly amazing. You just want to get them for collection. And let's see, main info. Event shop, anything interesting here? Oh, yes, this. So, Gene Alter's costume dress is finally upon us. Let's go down here. Shinjuku Sprite. There we go. There it is. So, we finally get her Shinjuku outfit. Uh, finally. Which doesn't change too much, but it's always nice to have alternate outfits for your servants. So, that is definitely worth getting your hands on. Outside of that, let's see. Uh, we've got Quartz, Money... Uh, Claw Chaos, nothing really that stands out. What is this? So, Portrait, I think it's just one of the drops. But anyway, that's it. But then we also have a Lottery. That's going to give us ooh, a good amount of those. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything particularly amazing here. Nope. So, just your standard Lottery. And let's see, main quest for some Quartz. So, definitely completing those is a good way to get some Quartz there. Free Quests. Bonus Quest. Eh. And the challenge quest, let's see what's worth it. Oh, a crystallized lord. So the senior science gene author and friend who's a senior in <laughs> Okay then. Frank's friend, who's that? Oh, Brunhilda, right. So anyway, yeah, so Da Vinci's event is definitely coming by here. And it's definitely worth not dedicating too much time, but the fact that Gene Alter gets a rate up once again is definitely nice. Then Setsubun, what do we have here? What is this? This is new. Summoning campaign, okay, oh, hello. Oh, I guess some pretty limited servants showing up here. Okay, so all three of those guys are pretty decent. Uh, Shun Doji is definitely a good arts assassin that plays well with other arts assassins. Even if she doesn't hit particularly hard, all the debuff she applies and the fact that she can charm almost anything for 60% of the time is pretty nice. Uh, standard Kinuki can definitely hit hard and can charge his MP really fast. Unfortunately, he has a Berserker and doesn't recharge it particularly quickly. But he is a collection type servant because he is pretty cool. And um, Raiko there, she's a 
Uh, Berserker that can hit a uh, party very hard, but unfortunately she is a Berserker and has very little survival, so she's pretty fragile. Other way of Turban, Sarto Moe Gozen and Ibaraki there, so interesting there. But let's see, main quest, Eventsies! What is it? Oh, hello! That's a nice look and see. Their critical damage, critical stat generation, and start MP gotch. Okay then, so this is not a bad CE. Now, animation updates. Oh, hello. One for him. Very nice. And floor rewards. Um, anything that stands out? Oh, the Golden Foes. Definitely a couple. So many tickets. No stakes, though, unfortunately. But yeah, an interesting event that's coming about here. So not too bad. So yeah, if you've been looking for Ibaraki or any of those servants, this is a good chance to get them. And then we come to the Valentine's event. So first, summoning campaign. Obviously, Sermon is showing up and then various other female characters. So let's take a look at Sermon and see what we can see about her, shall we? So she is an assassin. If you watch a part of the fight, you knew that already. That's a lot of hair right there. Okay, that's a lot better. I don't really like the ultra poofy dress she has there. But let's see, what do we have here? An arts assassin. Hello. Okay, then. Try to zone in P-Guys. I reduce all enemies deal of resistance for one turn. That is not a bad skill right there. Increases own MP generation for three turns. It ignores own attack and defense advantage of casters for basically... So basically, she's able to defend herself against casters for three turns. Even if she doesn't deal extra damage against them. And let's see. Inflicts poison for three turns to all enemies. Reduces their buster resistance. But consumes eight critical stars. And the poison goes from 500 to 1,000, and much resistance. This is probably the strongest part of this skill. Unfortunately, because she only has one buster, hold on, let's seek a Nora Phantasm. Yes, there's the reason why it's a buster there. So let's see, deals damage to all enemies and increases party's defense by 20%. It doesn't hit particularly hard though, but it increases her own MP damage, which activates first. So it normally, it could be at maximum here, which really isn't that much. So, yeah, I'm not sure where I would put her on the MP chain. But as an Arts Assassin, she's not too bad. I'm going to charge up her... Let's see, if she and Tamamo got together, they could have... They could stack her, their defense buffs up and go up to 40 or more. So that's not too bad. Put them together with Waver or um, I think Mash. And you could have a, quite a bit of a tanky team there. Even Jean. So as a defensive Assassin, she's interesting there. So that's that. So that was the F Valentine's event. Event shop. Oh, what's this? Sweet days? This is new. Who the hell are they? Let's go to the bottom and figure out who the hell they are. Uh, Bazit, Fragum, Bagmermit, and Karen Hortensia. Not from Fate Grand Order, but they're from somewhere else. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. She's familiar. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know where they're originally from. But from the Ilya series, she is the nurse, and she is the one that shows up later to help them out during the second season, or third season. But anyway, in Valentine drop rate, and increases buster and art performance. Interesting. Okay, that's not too bad, but not the best either. So Valentine event, okay, not too bad. Sam Ram is definitely an interesting servant there. And so th those are all the events for January. Now, let's take a quick look at February, because so far, still no new chapter release, shall we? So, Vanta, they summon... Oh, hello, the rerun event. This is important there. Winter Festival, not sure we're getting that. Uh, strengthening Quest, very nice. And Tom Million Dialogue Campaign, not sure we're getting this either. So, this is finally the first time this event is re coming along for the rerun. And if you don't have Ryogi Shiki Assassin, you should definitely work on getting her, because she's definitely a great arts assassin. But let's see, summoning campaign. You can get Ryogi Shiki, her Saber version, which is kind of like a better version of her assassin, but that hits in an AoE area. But then we also get Asagima Fujino, a new servant that's being introduced during that campaign. And then there's Stan, all of these, that there's just way too many to try and get a decent one there. Let's see, event CE, we get this again. I think I've got two or three of these, so I, hopefully I can finish off this one. This one you should get all five by the end of the event. This one is Summon, I think. And 
oh yeah, this, these are definitely nice to fi finally, hopefully, finish off a Crafton's level 100. Uh, quick farm, main info, let's see, challenge course event shop. Yeah, so that's a rework, but let's take a look at the stuff. So first, if you don't have Yogishiki Assassin, do your best to get her because she is definitely a nice arts-based assassin. So her first go increases her own arts performance by up to 50%, which is very powerful, and reduces one enemy's instant kill resistance. So this almost guarantees that you will instantly kill whatever it is you're hitting, as long as it isn't a boss because they tend to be completely immune to that effect. Then you can for one turn, increase some critical damage to your standard Eye of Mind Falls there. And Charlie is running P, guards by 20 to 30%, but deals 1,000 damage to herself, but she can't kill herself. Now that we're actually two, three years into the game, taking 1,000 damage for 20 to 30% MP charge is definitely not bad, especially if that means she gets to launch it that turn if she was missing just a little bit of a charge. Now, her Noble Phantasm, anti-unit arts, obviously, deals damage that ignores defense buff to one enemy for a very decent amount of damage, well, actually all the way here because you're going to get up to level 5, five there. And chance to into kill them goes up, so you definitely want to start with this one first. And you need the event items to ascend her, and she it really isn't that difficult to get her skills there. So now her jacket. Party's instant kill success rate by 30%. So if you're trying to build a instant kill team, she's definitely one you want on that team with her jacket on. Now let's take a look at Sajima Fujino, who's gonna be a brand new servant that we're getting during that event. So let's see, okay, not really sure who you are or what you're supposed to be. So she's an archer somehow. Uh, let's see, nothing stands out there. Two arts, two buster, difficult to play with that, around with that. Increase on buster performance, ignores defense, and increase on MP generation for three turns. Okay then, but our busters only have uh, three hits, so not sure on that. Second skill, ignores evasion for three turns and gains critical stars. That's okay. Reduces own max HP by 2,000 ow. Reduces own damage taken for three turns. And grants self gut status one time. So this skill is... <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure on that one. It wouldn't really work well against bosses unless she's got advantage. But taking 2,000 damage... Ugh. Arts performance, critical damage, debuff resistance. Let's see. Anti-world buster. Deals damage to one enemy, inflicts both block status to them for one time. Okay, 600 damage for standard. And reduces their attack. So, nothing that particularly stands out about her. She does have two arts cards for, and two buster, but that's really about it. Nothing really stands out. So yeah, interesting sir. I'm wondering what, how she's going to fit into the story. Now let's see, what is this of the FGO Winter Summer Festival? Uh, at 10 quarts for login days, okay. Uh, craft essence. Let's see, the pharaohs. Oh, that's that's a cute image right there. So we've got Ramses, we've got Nito Kreese, uh, Cleopatra, Alexander the Great Small Guy, and Master. And it does nothing, it's Master Experience. Okay, so just collection purposes. Summoning campaign. Okay, Ramses and Cleopatra, okay. Now, Cleopatra is limited, but I don't think Ramses is, so... Oh, and you also get rid up on Netflix as well, so not bad. And Memorial Quest, and... Okay, the complete, this is how you get the event crafted. Okay, so just a filler event. So, Million Dollar Campaign, let's see. If, if we get this event, we're going to get the Seraph Summoning Pool, essentially. Except, as you can see, Melty is not on that list. Okay, then, so that's just that. Oh, and Servant Strengthening. Oh, okay, so Strengthening for Kiara. Okay, that's nice. Uh, okay, so what is each one getting? Uh, so Kiara's getting a turn cooldown reduction and something about Art Strengthening. Uh, let's see, Marion Turnet. I have no idea what that says. Something about Healing, probably. Okay, Sherazade, I have no idea. Oh, Elizabeth's got something on a Noble Phantasm. Okay. Interesting. I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, hello. From C to C Plus. Not sure what that is. Probably increased damage. Oh, Martha Ryder. Something on a Noble Phantasm as well. Increases damage. And Melty is also getting something good. Okay, so we can definitely look forward to this. And that's it for January. Now, when are we... 
let's see, and March, still no story campaign, but we get the Saber Wars rerun event, which you haven't seen in a very, very long time. Caldea Boys Collection. And hello, one quarter and one half AP campaign. That can only mean one thing. Yep, there it is. We're not getting the Anastasia chapter until April, so put out your patient pants and be ready to wait it out. So let's see. Is there anything special in this summoning campaign? Uh, no, everything's as it was. Event shop. Let's see, just that one. That isn't particularly useful, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, points reward. Anything that stands out here? Uh, let's see, maximum pointage. Uh, crystallized lore. A lot of mana prisms, which is very nice because I'm actually starting to run low on them. Uh, Craft Essence Experience cards, Cloth Chaos, Golden Apples. I've got over 300 of these damn things. Uh, lots of QP. That's definitely welcome. So yeah, it definitely seems to be just a standard rerun with nothing special on this, well, outside of the summoning campaign. Challenge Quest, Crystallized Lord. Probably won't be too difficult. But yeah, that seems to be the only thing we're getting of interest during March. So yeah, we've got a long way to wait for anything worthwhile to come our way, especially when it comes to the story. But outside of that, the Valentine Summoning, the, uh, the Kyokai rerun, and the Da Vinci event in about uh, nine days. So yeah, now once we actually get to April, when we actually get close to the Anastasia chapter, we'll actually start looking at all the story events and all that other good stuff. But until then, enjoy the prologue. It was definitely very, very interesting. And I'm actually looking forward to the story because it got even more interesting than I thought it could. I'm glad I didn't actually look forward into the story and ruin it for myself. But anyway, thank you for watching and we will see you next time for... I'm not really sure. Maybe the Valentine? Maybe the Counterfeit Da Vinci Challenge Quest? Not really sure. But anyway, later.